Welcome to Survey Matters with Duncan Parnell. My name is Mark White. I'm the training and support manager for DP. Today, I want to talk to you guys about the latest release of Trimble Access, Trimble Access 2024.10. But first, please take time to like this video and subscribe. So it's November of 2024, and Trimble recently released the latest version of Trimble Access, which is Trimble Access 2024.10. And I want to take a little bit of time today and show you guys some of the new features in this newer version of Access that will help speed up your workflows in the field and just make it a little bit easier to get your work done there. Um, so the first thing is dark mode, okay? Uh, dark mode just gives you a black background in Trimble Access. So we're, we're all used to seeing this white map screen in Trimble Access. But if you're working at night, sometimes this white can be a little bit too bright or in low light conditions. And also some colored CAD lines tend to wash out with white. Or if you're collecting your own data and you're using colored lines, sometimes that can wash out. If I go ahead and go to my layer manager and turn on this DWG I have here, you'll see that... While it shows up on the screen, some of those lines can wash out a little bit. But if I go to my three dots at the bottom, go to settings and choose dark mode, it'll go ahead and switch to a black background and just make it a little bit easier to see that. So I'll accept there. Now it is going to tell me that it has to restart Trimble Access for it to make this change. So I'll say yes, and I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so Trimble Access has opened back up, and you can see here with that black background and running in dark mode that it's a whole lot easier to see the CAD lines there, right? So low light conditions, CAD drawings, your own line work, just if, you know, gives you another option to be able to see things on the screen and help with visibility. But while I got the map screen up here, let me show you another new feature that they put in, and that's the ability to do offsets quickly and easily when you're working with a CAD drawing or you've got other points in the job and you want to offset those points. All right, so I'm going to open up my Snap2 toolbar here, zoom in a little bit on the screen. Let me just make sure, yeah, I got a box around there. Box around the check means that DWG is selectable so I can stake out this building here. Just want to double check that. And let's go ahead and say we want to stake out this corner of the building. Now I've got my rover on there so i'm going to move my rover over here closer to the position there to show you the stakeout but i've selected the line for the building now i'm going to go ahead and create a point on a couple of these lines just so i can get an azimuth of the line and stake out that corner all right so with the snap to toolbar on i'll select endpoint i'll create a point there then let me zoom in just a little bit to make sure i create or select the right point over here and I'll select the other end of this line so then I can use that as the azimuth. Since it's one continuous line going all the way around the building, it's not gonna let me offset it by the azimuth because the line's got a lot of different azimuths in it, right? So what we can do here is go to stake out and I'll say I wanna stake out that point. Let me put in an antenna height here, forgot to do that. Throw in my two meter pole, start. And so you can see it's, it's staking me out to that point, right? But what if I wanted to do a five foot offset of the building, say out to the west side there? You'll see now we have a little offset button down at the bottom. I can choose that, put in my offset, in this case, five foot. I can do two offsets if I needed to, but five foot here, um, delta from the point. For the azimuth, what I can do is select that azimuth, come on, and then go that point, to this point and it'll automatically grab the asthma for me and just say accept and now you'll see i'm instantly staking out that offset five feet on the line over there now let's say we wanted to set two offsets so we could locate pull a tape and locate the corner right so now we want to do the one to the south of the corner i can go back to offset again and just tap my box over here go minus 90 accept and now it's gonna do 90 degrees over off that azimuth, so I'm five foot away again, right? So again, quick, easy way to do offsets to points, you know, whether you've got um, existing points in the job and you just wanna offset them, or if you've got a DXF like this and you wanna be able to offset stuff for building, storm drains, 
you know, storm boxes, back of curb, things like that. Okay. So offset button at the bottom of the stakeout screen. Great new feature as well there. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape here. Escape again. Just clear my selection of the screen. Zoom back out just a little bit. And I'm going to turn off my drawing here. Turn that guy off and turn on my Trimble Maps. If you hadn't used Trimble Maps before, you know, as long as uh, you're under warranty, you do have to have a warranty to be able to access the maps. But as long as you're under warranty, you've got an internet connection and you're using a job that's got a projection in it, right? It's got to know where to put the maps. You got to be working in state plane or some other known coordinate system. I can hit Trimble Maps at the bottom and turn on my satellite view. And now here you'll see... This is the office part where my office is located in Morrisville, North Carolina. So there's a Copeland Oak Center. And another new feature in Trimble Access is the ability to load KMZs and KMLs from Google Earth. So this can come in handy. Like, let's say you've got an engineer that says, I want you to survey this area. He goes into uh, Google Earth because that's all he has there. And he draws a box around the area polygon maybe with some hatching or whatever and just send you that it says hey here's your survey limits right so i've got this copeland oaks kmz there i can turn it on accept that let me back out a little bit and now you'll see i've got the box saying hey these are your survey limits this is where you need to go so anything that you can export out of google earth as a kml or a kmz now you can load that into your project and turn that on and off as well. Again, works great for boundaries, just kind of if somebody wants to share with you or put pinpoints on the map, whatever. Use your Trimble Maps as a background map. Use the KML to put that feature on top of the background map. So that's, a, that's another good one in there. Now, um, one of the other cool ones is tape distances. If you guys hadn't used tape distances, they've made some upgrades to that. So let me just go ahead and cut some of this off turn off my snap to toolbar go to my layer manager turn off that kmz and i'll go ahead and leave my my background maps on there but under tape distances if i go to kogo tape distances what tape distances was set up to do was like if you need to tape the distance around a building or some object you can shoot two points off of it, and then tape distance is going to calculate 90 degree lines with those distances that you use a tape measure to measure up, all right? So in a lot of cases, if you're doing a topo, you might shoot two corners of a wall on a building and then tape measure in the rest, right? And traditionally, we'd write it all down in our field book, but here in Trimble Access, We've been able to do this for a long time. This goes all the way back to Survey Controller, but you always had to do it with two points. Now you can do one, you can start with one point and get a, a direction off the map, just kind of put in an azimuth, tape in all your points, and then close to another point, and Access will actually adjust it to make all those measurements 90 degrees and line up those two points, okay? So that's new. Where you used to be able to do it off of two points, now you can do it in one point. And I'm going to do a video in the future on that, so I'll show you guys how tape distances work. That'll be on our access playlist coming up in December. But just know now, instead of having to have two points, you can use one point, and you can do some adjustment to make those azimuths fit and make everything right angle between those two points, okay? So again, quicker and easier out there in the field. So I'm going to escape here and turn off tape distances. Um, so one of the other things is the measurement method can now be stored as a function. So when you're using measure codes, if you want to go from like a topo point to an observed control point or a tilt offset with an R12i or R980 or you know just rapid point to topo point, let's say, you can easily do that using one of the function keys, okay? And again, Measure codes is one of those things. If you haven't used measure codes before, you really should look into it. So what measure codes allows you to do is assign a code to these boxes. And down here under the options, the way I have this set up, whoops, under the edit button up at the top, I should say, I've got this set up for a template pickup with five elements. So I got a back curb, EP center line, EP back curb. So if you're thinking of a road cross section, back and curb, edge of pavement, center line, edge of pavement, back a curb, right? So I'm telling it to enable a template pickup, five elements and do a zigzag. So basically I'll shoot it across, go up, shoot it across, go up, shoot it across. So it's going to zigzag. What the software does is if I click on one of these buttons, 
If I go ahead and accept that, if I click on this button on the screen, it's going to go ahead and take a shot and call it BC. I could also hit number seven on the keypad. You see the little seven up there. Or I could navigate with my arrows and whichever one's yellow, I could hit the enter key. So a few different ways to enter it. Cool thing about this is the codes are all on there. It's going to bump you from line string to line string to line string. So you, if you're working out in traffic or something, you can keep your head up, look around, hopefully not get run over. Or it's just going to make life quicker when you're doing topo. So if you're not using measure codes, check it out. Start using measure codes. But one of the things about measure codes was it always remembered the last measurement method you used under measure points. So if I flip over here real quick to measure and go to measure points, right now I'm set to calibration point. I don't want to be doing calibration points when I'm using measure codes. So I'd want to come over here, probably either set it to rapid point or topo point, right? But one of the cool things is you'll see this is set to uh, function one at the top. I can hit the little star up there at the top and assign measure points, topo point to F1, assign measure points, rapid points to F2. I can do like the uh, tilt offset to uh, function three. And now instead of having to leave measure codes, go into measure points, change my measurement method, go back into measure codes, I can just stay in measure codes and if I want to take a shot on BC to start things off with, and I want to do a topo point, I can just hit my F1 key, and you'll see my method is set to topo point, right? And I didn't set it to auto store, so I need to store that point. All right, you see how it automatically kicks me over to EP? Now, let's say I want to take a rapid point on the next one. I could hit F2. Observation Boom. Stored. It goes straight to a rapid point, right? And now it's going to leave it in rapid point, so if I hit this box here for center line, it go ahead, goes ahead and takes a shot as a rapid point. If I wanted to change back to topo point, boom, F1, now I'm back to topo point, store that. And then you'll see this one's got a BC1 next to it. I've got the string minus, string plus. So, you know, if you're drawing lines, I, of course I just did EP without adding a one to it over there, but I can hit plus string here, so this will draw a new BC line instead of adding on to the other one that I already started. All right, and then you got a fine string. So if you get up like BC 100 and you can't remember where you are, you hit fine string, it'll automatically find the next one for you and bump you up. Okay, but that's a little bit about measure codes. The big thing in there is I can go to measure points before I do measure um, codes and I can set my different methods. Like let's say I wanted to do a uh, observe control point. I can go to that star, go to function, and I can assign that to a function key. And now I can change my measurement method without having to leave measure codes. Again, just trying to save you guys some time out there in the field, making that workflow a little bit easier here in Access. So I'll cancel that, escape out of my measurement screen. Again, if you're not using measure codes, start. I'll do another video on that, how to get it all set up, how to, uh, how to do things with a feature library there. But That'll definitely make your life easier. So the last one I wanted to cover were some new export methods that we have. The main one is being able to export a land XML that'll work in Bentley, okay? So I know a lot of you guys that do work in the Southeast US for DOTs are using Bentley, you know, whether it's in rows, some of you guys spend on where you are, might still be using Geopack but you're using some kind of Bentley product, right? So now if I've done line work to collect data, I got points, line work, uh, survey data, and I want to export it out to Bentley, I can export a land XML with Bentley properties there. So I can go up to my menu, tap the job, go to export, and you'll see under land XML, there is now a Bentley compatible format, okay? And I can include points, I can include feature coded line work, I can include database line work from a background map or something like that, okay? So I can include anything I want in there, tell it where I want to export that to, accept it, accept it, and that's going to go ahead and create a land XML that can go into Bentley products. So another new feature, make life easier for you guys. All right, so those are the main ones I picked out. There's a few other ones like 
NEMA, some NEMA upgrades. Uh, as far as exporting NEMA data from a total station, you can now do a NEMA output from a total station to something like a GPR or something along those lines. And you can also export NEMA out of an Android device where you used to just be able to export NEMA out of a window device. All right. Also, some more IFC functionality for anybody that might be doing building construction, so you can look into that as well. But these are the main ones I picked out that I thought would be really helpful for us land surveyors. So again, you've got dark mode, you've got offset points that are quick and easy and stake out, you've got KML, KMZ support in there, you got a new ways to easily switch between your measurement methods when you're in measure codes. Um, tape distances, you can now use one starting point instead of two, and you can actually adjust it to fit the data a little bit better. And now we can export a land XML for Bentley. Well, hey, that's all for this one. Can't wait to see you guys next time on Survey Matters with Duncan Parnell.